good day. So now we can continue with our semantic web course. Greeting to you who came now and also to those who will see this later. Uh, so uh, I would like you to unmute your microphone so that when you have questions online that you can immediately ask. Yes, I have. I have unmuted it. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, last time we did uh, some generic uh, presentation uh, or demonstration how a protege work, and we start build uh, some small protege project that you can use as an example for your assignment. And uh, before we come back to this project, I just briefly uh, go through some slides with more details about rules, because we uh, already put some rules to this uh, uh, protege project. But uh, I will give you, at least you know that such slides exist where you can take additional information. And uh, just to say that in semantic web, uh, web reasoning goes very differently from traditional reasoning because it's uh, semantic web is open world assumption and it means that everything new that inferred by the rule must not be contradicted to what was previously uh, stored uh, which is different with closed world assumption that inference that you make uh, may uh, how to say, uh, delete some facts from the past. So it's like different type of logic behind. And it's uh, well illustrated on this uh, like screen. So if uh, we think that there are certain rules that drive situation from this situation to that one, then to that and so on. And uh, this rule, uh, when it fires, when it is runs, uh, this new situation, has some new properties, but some old properties disappear. So this is traditional reasoning, closed world assumption reasoning, which is not supported by uh, semantic web. So semantic web supports something like that, like you have tabula rasa, nothing in the very beginning, and uh, you start to reason every new fact, like you, you reason something, then something else is added and it's not contradict to this one it's like natural part which was hidden before but you uh, infer it then you infer something else then something else like step by step you infer more and more information but uh, in case if you want this kind of previous picture this means that uh, you must as we already know create various uh, time intervals and say uh, that within certain interval like different world is totally like there is specific situation at particular time interval with specific properties and if you want to change something it means that you create another time interval where some properties will be uh, different than from previous observation and we have uh, already made uh, such things when we are talking about record of uh, the person. For example, job record or study record. Because uh, when you have, for example, now your university record active, uh, so some properties from your previous study records are not working anymore. But they are still working in this previous world, which is uh, stored as other record for other intervals. And there are uh, some examples you can see for uh, different uh, that previous type of inference which work for like within uh, databases and within semantic web these uh, rules which uh, invent implicit uh, make implicit information explicit. And uh, for that, we will be using uh, its semantic web rule language that is supported by Protege. You have seen already a few simple rules uh, done with it. 
there are just screenshots examples. The basic uh, uh, structure of the rule is that you have uh, some something like what must be true, like antecedent, and then you have this kind of uh, follows and consequent. And according to open world assumption, this consequent must not contradict to this what has been before. And uh, here you just uh, put certain uh, atoms, so-called uh, atoms, uh, where you describe something which may happen together. That's like conjunction. This here sign of conjunction. In latest version of Protege, instead of conjunction, they are using comma. But it's the only big difference between that previous version of Protege and this new one. And uh, what can be atom? If you have uh, something and within it you have a variable, it means that you are talking about class. Like here, you are just assuming that there is something which is belong to class person. When you have two, it means that you are talking about property. So for example, has sibling, who has sibling and what is that sibling? And again, like, and the second one belong to clan, uh, class man. You see that uh, what kind of rule is described here. If, if someone is a person and it has sibling, who is man, then it means that this person has brother. This first one has brother, second one. So you infer new relation between these two, which actually not killing these previous ones. They are still remaining the same. You just infer additional. And then uh, what else? There are predefined uh, set of special uh, so-called built-ins in SVRL that helps you to uh, make really cool rules. Like you can compare two data types. We are talking about then data type properties, like whether they are equal, not equal, less or, less or equal, greater, gre uh, greater or equal, and so on, all of them. And uh, some very basic mathematical operations. Sometimes it's good that you can sum this stuff, subtract, multiply, divide, and so on. So it's easy just to check a particular example. Like uh, this is a rule which compute age of a person from the current year and the date of birth. Like uh, if you have a number for current year, date of birth of person, and you want to decide whether person alive or death, you can just use uh, this kind of rule. And you see here we have that kind of constant named today. You can uh, check it later. And then this is also interesting rule. Uh, I always put the places in which ontology so you can check because all of these ontologies are still online and you can just uh, see and uh, execute these rules if you want. Then also there is a special characteristics of scientists called uh, Hirsch index or citation index. And there is that kind of uh, rule, informal of course, that if a researcher, like researcher whose uh, Hirsch index is more than age of the person, minus 40, then the researcher is a good one. So therefore, uh, just check how the rule is there. So we are, uh, we state that we are talking about some researcher unknown, like this is a researcher. What we know that uh, it has some property age, it's also variable age. Then what we also say that, uh, that age is greater than 40. It's before we subtract it. So of course, we will. We must talk about researchers who is more than 40 years old. And then we uh, use this kind of uh, uh, built-in subtract. 
So we compute active years of researchers as h minus 40. Why minus? Because it's subtract keyword. And we uh, actually receive value for this variable, active years. Now we have this uh, property. All of, all of these properties, of course, must be defined in ontology. That uh, this uh, person has Hirsch index. So the person has Hirsch index, which is equal to this one. And now we compare if this Hirsch index is greater than active years of the researchers of that person, then the person belongs to class good researcher. So it's a quite a useful rule because when inference uh, ongoing, you just, uh, you put some facts about different people and uh, this works as a classifier. It puts concrete people to concrete classes because of that rule. Then there is also some informal way how you measure extra weight of a person. And for example, it can work like that. If your age is between 29 and 89, then you would have an extra weight equal to positive difference between the weight in kilograms and height in centimeters minus 100. There is that kind of also informal measurement. And of course, you can use all this, uh, uh, the same logic of a rule to compute it. So all of this can be found in uh, that ontology, just for you to know. There are many other things. Uh, then uh, I want to say that one of the really big ontologies that we have published as a uh, even a very serious journal paper was ontology of time. So we try to put very many rules. It's actually 170 rules altogether in this ontology uh, that can infer various hidden relationship between uh, time intervals and time points. It especially is good because uh, when you attach to, uh, for example, your activity, particular time points, when you start something, when you finish something, and then you receive this kind of time intervals. And there might be a different kind of uh, connections between these intervals, which can be inferred using this uh, ontology. So you can find this ontology here. And I will just show uh, it if I have it somewhere. Yes, temporal. So I just switch my screen for a moment. So can you see the screen? Uh, yes, we can. Yeah. So you just see that there are so many different kind of rules and there are not so many classes here. So in this case, we talk about just, okay, this is kind of service classes from previous version of Protege, but the main uh, class is temporal interval and temporal point. And uh, because this is like rule-based ontology, so it's completely rules. So all this, particular points are taken just for uh, testing it. And uh, when you apply this ontology, of course, you put your own temporal points and intervals. You can uh, notice that there is such temporal point as today, which is defined as a year and uh, months and uh, certain thing. And uh, you specify it in the very beginning when you start working with this ontology with a particular year, which is now. So you must do it uh, manually and uh, the rest will be working as it is. What else? We have time intervals. Let me show. Just five different time intervals that are defined 
Uh, some of them define, uh, defined completely, some of them not. And uh, it's interesting that uh, remaining properties of these intervals might must be inferred. Of course, uh, it was based on previous old version of Protege, and uh, this kind of reasoner may not work. I used this SVRL tab, it's a special tool for running big uh, sets of rules. Let's check whether it will work with this huge amount of rules. So it's doing something now, thinking, I believe. And after some time, maybe. Yes, it's done something, then I run it. OK, so I, now I can uh, return back and see whether uh, my you see how many new relations appear about every description of every interval. So it discovers a lot of different kind of hidden connections between uh, the different intervals, which is very uh, good. And uh, if, uh, let's say, to import that kind of a similar ontology to any project, it means that you can also uh, somehow use uh, temporal aspect of domain that you're describing. Of course, use of such ontology together with another one that you're doing requires uh, good, of course, powerful computers and enough memory. Okay, this is one thing. And uh, then I also show one of the uh, actually big projects that I also did as a showcase for you. I just switch to it. So uh, this is uh, ontology that is built uh, on top of uh, DBP. So what I did, I just it was time when I was inspired but by one of the Turkish movie about those sultans. And uh, I just uh, wanted to create such ontology that includes all royal families worldwide. And uh, of course, those which are already registered in DBP. And what I wanted on top of this uh, data that I captured from Wikipedia, I put certain rules that discover hidden family relations between them. You see, actually quite many rules. Because what you can find in Wikipedia, in Wikipedia you can find just basic relations. I will show you this uh, ontology that I has been using. And you see this uh, prefix DBO, these are only relations that are available in DBP. So you can find uh, child or parent, they are like uh, inverse to each other relation between two persons and spouse, like wife or husband. So these three relations actually is enough to compute all other things, like uh, having aunt, having child-in-law, grandchild, grandparent, grand-grand-grandchild, grand-grandparent, uh, second-order sibling, if you want, and uh, nephew, niece, uncle, so, so many different stuff. So I just uh, wanted that uh, I have that kind of uh, data that I can check who is who to whom. And uh, for that, I just download and uh, by using queries, everything is in uh, my presentation that is now in PowerPoint. And you can see step by step how, how I just few queries to DBP and I created it on is, uh, this ontology. Why there are needed few queries? Because it was, uh, this is open source, this DBP and some people put information about royal families to uh, one class is some other name, different classes. So I must just uh, discover in which classes information can be and build certain 
is done. So, uh, and uh, when I capture it, I use the property of people there, which is uh, gender, so that I can feel automatically men and women, they're different. So we have royal men and royal women here. Uh, what also, because of my uh, rules, I must create many uh, these properties. I have shown this to you. I don't need uh, any data properties here. I just want how uh, the family relations to each other work. And then uh, what I did, uh, uh, because it was huge, actually, file. So you see amount uh, here, amount of uh, instances. That's quite uh, many individuals also. So I have to use stronger computer when I make a special inference because uh, there's just from three relations that are available, I infer tens of new relations. So therefore information after reason, uh, it's huge. So I use huge computer and then I save all inference to this file. So now you can uh, browse anyone. For example, let's take some individual uh, maybe some man. Oh, it's great. You see this kind of famous person, Suleiman the Magnific Magnificent, one of the famous uh, sultans in the history of uh, Turkey. And now you see how many different properties are inferred, different connections. So it's just... Uh, Three of them are basic from DBpedia, and the rest is inferred, was inferred by uh, reasoner on the basis of the rules. So you can easily make similar type of thing. And actually, I suggest you that uh, uh, when you make your assignment, you can put uh, not only yourself, but few of your family members, real or artificial, it's up to you. And uh, you can infer their uh, different family relationships between them, not manually enter, but infer. You just say who is uh, parent to whom, it's enough, and who is spouse to whom. Just from these two relations, all the rest will be inferred. And for you to make this possible, I created uh, even special ontology family, which is empty without all these guys of women so that you can put your own i just switch screen and show this ontology to you and of course the reference to it you can find from powerpoint presentation but i will just switch screen to this family ontology So this is family ontology. You can see here all these rules. And uh, they are like prepared all properties here are available. So everything is there, just uh, two classes, man and woman. And I put here, I put prefix test just to show it's a test with uh, some artificially invented family. And with this, uh, you can just check how uh, this reasoner verb because it's not so much information so that you can run reasoner in normal computer and uh, check how it infers hidden relations and uh, if we take some uh, somebody like uh, this so what we only know about person in the very beginning is just uh, parents nobody else like two parents and uh, about every person, you also know to which class it belongs, for example, to class men. So, like, you know the gender, man or woman, or you put it like that, for your family members, uh, who are parents, and if there is spouse, who is spouse. And the rest, if I just try to run a reasoner, start a reasoner, you see how many connections to others 
about grandsons, about being ne nephew of somebody, father-in-law of somebody, have uncle, have son-in-law, sister-in-law, sibling-in-law. There are so many different uh, keywords that people are using. But uh, imagine that if you need to put manually all this huge information, but it's what inf a reasoner can do for you. So therefore, I suggest you that when you will do your assignment, you can uh, use uh, also this anthology if you want, uh, edit, and uh, these additional rules, which will be uh, imported to your anthology. They can uh, help you to define hidden family relations among, among those people who you enter uh, to this project. Is it clear? Are there any questions at this moment? Please tell me if anything. Uh, hi, uh, Vagan. Uh, can you show us a, a small example about it, like how we are going to start and uh, how this is going to function? Like, can you uh, build a short example now? Uh, I think that would be very much helpful. Uh, what kind of example you mean? Uh, like how these things are inferring each other. So like one relation or two relations. So uh, it, it would be great if you can just create a parent or a child and create an infer between them. Yeah. No, but that's uh, actually how it works. It's uh, based on uh, rules. So you, you can check uh, that I define every uh, specific relation, which is not basic one, with a separate rule. For example, I define uh, has mother relation. So it means that if we have some person and it has parent, and parent is, let's say, woman, then uh, we are talking about, no, it's just even grandmother, like parent and parent twice. Oh, I see. Okay, so uh, the total thing is based on these rules, right? So when the reasoner is running, it's going through these rules and generating all the data. Yeah, it's true. Okay. You, okay. you just put basics. Of course, uh, some things you built in, in this anthology, you put manually because it's your family. In the anthology royalty that I have shown you, I take data from DBpedia about these basic connections. But still, these rules, which are my rules, they help to invent, uh, infer all hidden connections between family members. So uh, they are not explicit in DBpedia, so therefore I must create definition of being mother, grandmother, sibling-in-law, brother, grandson, uh, what else? Uh, uh, has wife, has husband, son, son-in-law, sister, cousin, cousin, sorry, aunt, and so on. So, so many different uh, this kind of uh, terms we humans are actually using when we are discussing. And what I need, I need to put to this if part of the relation just basic connections, those which are, uh, must be uh, known, like who is uh, man, who is woman, and uh, who is parent to whom, and who is sibling to whom. It's enough to this if part to infer all these exotic relationships. Okay, is it now clear? And yes. for you to check example, the best way for you is just to in, uh, refer to this anthology, just open it. You know that uh, you can uh, make open from URL anytime, as I did here. And you can just uh, open this anthology and put your own family members, just for fun, not for sharing with me or with anybody. You just put here a few persons you know and... Uh, uh, manually enter uh, because everything is ready here. All properties are already defined. So you can just um, create these values who is parent to whom and who is that partner or spouse to whom. And then just start run reasoner and it will show you 
even something you don't know about your family because there are really exotic names of uh, relations. Okay? Okay, yes. Or still something unclear here. We just check, it's uh, that kind of um, rules, they are uh, not very complex. You just must be careful by writing them. But uh, you cannot make syntactical mistake because it warns you, uh, but uh, always you can run reasoner and check whether it works or not. But of course, I appreciate if you add few rules yourself to your project, just invent some rules so that you can as i did with all ontologies so you have so many samples of ontologies that you can see how rules are done and you cr can create your own just from this screen you just click here add rule and type your own new rule to your project this is your rules and also you can uh, as i told you import if you import the whole ontology, this one, to your project, then all these rules will become visible to you also, and they will be also executable, I believe. Okay. So, what else? Let me check temporal family. Okay, now I will switch to that uh, ontology that we start doing together, our project, and uh, I add there something, and let's see what is there comparably to what we have last time. So this is the uh, main screen of our ontology that named Tutorial 2020 that we are doing uh, together. And uh, the file uh, is updated. And after today, if we change something, I will update it again. So you can uh, check it anytime from Moodle, at least this file. And uh, you can, uh, in your assignment, you can use just basic logic of it. And you remember what is uh, there, just let's show classes. So when you're describing yourself, we uh, agree that you uh, create, of course, class for people because you are a person. So you create basic class of persons. Then you can create several subclasses, uh, not only for yourself, like men, of course, it's uh, for, for men and women for women, but also you can add, we already agree, some other classes because a person can be like vegetarian, not vegetarian. It can be mid-aged, old or young. And uh, there are many other divisions. It's only about person. But there are many important things surround you. And among these important things, it can be, I don't know, for example, car. If you love your car, you can create such kind of class like car, and you can create instance of this class, which is your car, and connect yourself with this car. So you know how to do it. Just create appropriate object property and uh, do this. And uh, you can also create photo of your car. Then you uh, you must you you need then here special class for photos. So just it will be URI of your a photo and uh, you can connect uh, your car as an instance with the instance of the photo for example it's also doable using this kind of stuff because uh, you can put uh, your photo publish it in the web it will have then unique uri and you can use this uri as the uri of your of the uh, i mean of that photo what else here uh, also, places are important, and we already create such two classes, city and country, for places, because uh, you can put uh, different people or different things, 
connected to the places. And places also may have some connections between each other. Like country has city and city has country or something like that. What else is here? Just reminding you because we, we had this already uh, last time. So you can create uh, complex classes like uh, all non-vegetarian men. And when you create such class, you just defined it uh, in a special way. So as an, like in this case, as an intersection of class men, class non-vegetarian and class old. Interesting. And then uh, uh, when you create new instance of any class, you, you understand that instance can belong to several classes. So you can connect instance to one or several classes. Like if I take this individual as some person, for example, Wagan. And here is, you see types to which classes it belongs. So Wagan is person and Wagan is non-vegetarian. It's what is entered. You can add here any more classes if you believe that uh, you or anyone you are talking belongs to several classes from your uh, taxonomy. Then you put here as many as necessary. And which means that actually uh, that person will inherit properties of several classes. But also another way to classify the person, not manually, but with the rules. And we have probably some rules, let's check. For example, defining a class old. So if the person has, like me, is uh, less than 90, 60 birth, birth year, then it's old person. So it means that you don't need explicitly put yourself to the old. This rule will do it. But it will use this uh, birthday information, birthday information, which is, remember, one of our uh, properties. You see, has birth year. So it's defined already. So everything what you can tell about persons or things must be defined in data properties or in object properties. Here it's like mutual relations between different things. So this part is more or less, uh, must be more or less easy. The only important thing that we uh, discussed last time is how to deal with uh, that information which change in time. And if you think that when you describe uh, step by step your uh, way from you born and to now, and that on this road you have uh, different, for example, uh, studies, and you may have study record like your very first school, then maybe secondary school, then maybe some college, then maybe. Yes, one university where you got bachelor degree, then another university where you are doing master degree. So you, you may have several study records. And we already define record as something that has beginning and end. You see the data property, like record is valid from, and it will be some date and valid to. You see that it's date and time. And just we have uh, classes for two types of job and study record. And let's uh, check because there are already a few uh, entities uh, we have say we, we have already saved here and you can see how it works. For example, job record of whom? Like M Michael, uh, job for Ferrari. Let's check it. What it includes, uh, Michael Job for Ferrari? It has reference to profession. It's a Formula One driver, and we have class professions. It's job record of Michael Schumacher. Has employer, because for job, uh, job record is important who was employer, what is company, which is employer. And it's valid from this date to this date. So that's just description of one job record of Michael Schumacher. 
what else let's check another for example uh, vagan's job for university of uvascular it's again job record of vagan has employer university of uvascular all of these instances already registered in some of these classes you might you may check then a reference to profession teacher because we have here somewhere profession yes here is profession and here we have several professions let check it you see we have three professions formula one driver librarian and teacher you can add more if you have uh, reference to different people with different uh, professions of course so that's uh, how my record defined and uh, i have another job record the job re record in other university then it's again job of uh, same person has employer another university which is also as you see dbpedia uh, link there has reference to profession teacher and again from to reference uh, about this interval so it means that actually cv is about uh, adding more and more job records if you have several uh, even small jobs it will be great that you can do it uh, you can have study record let's check what kind of study records we have structure of study record little bit different but what common is that uh, both job record and study record they uh, somehow uh, inherit from record the structure valid from valid to but internally they have something else consider vagan uh, like master record so it again it's a study record of vagan it has institution in previous case you remember a job record has employer here has institution at its institution where i got this record then intended degree master of science and and the, uh, you can check do we have degrees here somewhere see here educational degree we were really clever in the very beginning that we add such class so that we have here several possible degrees I just show it what kind of degrees we have bachelor master of science and phd of course you can add here more degrees if you want especially if you are talking about degree from secondary school okay i'm coming back to study record so intended degree from and to that's it and you may have several study records which refer to different organizations so therefore before you create such record you must put these organizations to particular class like here educational institution it must be there when you are talking about uh, job record you must also add uh, something like in my case i was um, where it is Uh, city country educational institution you may create here a company as a yeah it's it's already there so company yes and uh, you can put here all companies which were hiring you so if you work for university you can just take instance from here so in this case we have just ferrari as a company uh, referenced there and it's from dbpedia this page of ferrari i used so you can find everything you need of course uh, uh, if this is common term a common uh, well-known company then it's, it's definitely in uh, dbpedia otherwise you create this company inside your ontology so that's it it's almost everything of course uh, it will be great if you put here hobbies as a classes and connect yourself with the hobbies uh, also it can be if you have married several times you can create a marriage record and tell with which wife or husband you live from to certain period of time you can add here friendship record 
and you can also say that I was friend with this one from two, because things even like friendship, it might may not be forever, and you cannot say that this guy is friend of this one. You can tell it only for now, but you don't know whether whether it will be uh, always true. So therefore, uh, for such kind of uh, statements about person, it's better to use this kind of record and just uh, put here different subclasses of record, which are valid for certain time interval. And then you will receive really complete description of yourself. But if you later import here a few more ontologies, like uh, this ontology about family relations, then when you put here more, let's say, people to men and women uh, classes, manually, some of your family members, and manually tell who is who, uh, who is uh, parent to whom, then you can, uh, when you download that family ontology, you can even infer a lot of family relations. And everything will be in the same ontology of yourself. That's... Uh, the main point here. It makes it helpful uh, that you can increase uh, this classification not only by manual adding classes, but by adding some classes and properties which are defined in imported ontology. And you can create your own ontology as a separate one for import, just to show how it works. Or you can use one of mine ontologies. It's also doable. Any questions at this moment? Okay, then uh, I would just to, to show how this query in DBpedia works and how to use it and import to the ontology. I just uh, create a simple ontology because I don't want to mess up with this big that we already have. I just create separate ontology. I switch to it, the screen, and show you how it works. Uh, later, I will upload all this ontology to Moodle so that you can uh, check it yourself also. So. So this, uh, I just create ontology, which I want uh, to describe relationship between countries and cities. And what I want, I want to use real countries and cities from DBpedia. But I want to make it really big one. So I want to, uh, when this class of classes, I prepared two classes, city and country. You see they are empty now and there is no instances in it. But I want to fill it, populate with such kind of term, populate these classes with real instances from DBpedia, like uh, take all cities which D DBpedia knows and all countries which DBpedia knows and also relation between them. And this uh, relation, what I want, uh, this object property just has city. You see that when we are talking about country, then this property has city is applied and the range will be city. When we are talking about uh, city, then we are talking then uh, is city of. So particular city is city of some country. So I just prepared shell, empty shell to start querying uh, DBpedia. So what then I need when I will create this DBpedia query, I must use as a URI uh, or namespace, this namespace of this uh, particular small ontology of this shell. The name of it will be this country city. So it will be there. So it means that uh, I can use uh, when I'm writing or referring to these properties, like has city city of i just can uh, use them as such without long prefixes and whatever i capture from dbpedia will be easy then to uh, somehow 
mm, import to this shell. So first, shell is prepared. You see two classes, city, country, and uh, two inverse to each other properties. What I want all cities from the world here, to this class, all countries from the world here, and uh, define this values like connect each city with each country. Okay, so what I need for that? I will just show you. So first I switch to screen to Chrome. Let me It's just uh, the logic, how, uh, because you don't know how the names of relations are in DBPD. So you must check it first. I just take some city, for example, my home city, and check uh, how this city is connected. Oh, I immediately notice this uh, term. This is property, DBO country and which is connected to my country. So at now I know the name of the property which connects city to country. What else I'm looking for? I'm looking for the class name for this city. You see type. Oh, just simple. DBR city. So these are prefixes. A prefixes you see in the corner of the screen that's uh, the prefixes there, and uh, I will define these prefixes the same way in my, you will see when I will build my query. I believe it's everything I need to know about it right now. Then I can check also for country, what the name of class for country. So it's Ukraine, let's check whether there is type Where it's type here. Yes, here is type. So one type which is needed for me, it's DBO country. So this is country. So three things I learned. DBO city, DBO country, and DBO country with a small letter as a property. That's it. Now you can build this, uh, and I will switch my screen to the PowerPoint where this property, uh, where this query is created. One moment. So can you see this slide now? So I put uh, some basic set of prefixes just in case. They are just uh, copy paste. You can just uh, use this slide to copy paste all these prefixes if you want. Then I create prefix separate to this uh, ontology, which is empty one I have shown you before. And I put here just empty prefix for compactness of the query. So it means just uh, that kind of double dots will be enough to refer to it. But then I uh, first show here, you see construct and where part of the query. By the way, can you see this where part? Because it's... I uh, yes, it. yes, we can. Okay.
So first, I, I just say that what I am looking for, that I'm looking for such kind of uh, graph where there is something X, which is a country. A is a keyword, you remember, in this answer notation. I'm looking for Y, which is a city. And I'm looking to that kind of connection between Y and X, that Y, you see, DBO country, small letter, it's property X. So it means that uh, this city, which is Y, as a country, has X. So it's very simple way apart. And I am using things which I have seen, as you remember, just uh, checking concrete country, concrete, whatever you're looking, school, university, just check how the name of property sounds so that you can construct this way apart. And then construct part. It's almost uh, everything referred to my ontology here, which I, uh, I created as an empty one. So what I'm, uh, I want to say that city is a class, country is a class, then X will must belong to country, X which is discovered from DBpedia, but uh, to country in my ontology, and Y must belong to city in my ontology. And also, I use here these uh, two properties, my properties. They are defined, you see, differently than in DBpedia, because I want it by this way. So I say that is city of, it's an object property, I must tell it explicitly. It's better to tell it here, otherwise uh, you will not find it in the import. Then uh, has city is also object property. And then I specify explicitly y is city of x and x has city y. I use both property just to have comp uh, everything in at once there. So this part will, is must be constructed. So is it clear how this query is organized? Is it any kind of concern about it? Okay, if no, then I switch now, like uh, taking it to clipboard. And then I will switch my screen uh, to the DBpedia query engine. So you see that I paste already this query to uh, this uh, query window. So that's a query that uh, we have seen just now in my uh, PowerPoint. Then here we are choosing always this RDF XML. It's important uh, because uh, we are going to deal with a big amount of instances. So I add added a couple of zeros here, execution timeout. Otherwise, it will not be capable to capture it in a short time that was predefined here by default. So I add here a couple of zeros. So you can actually put more. When I was looking for royal families, it was I put more and wait several minutes until it discovers everything. So is it clear right now? Just tell me yes from time to time. Uh, yes, it's clear. Okay. And then run query. So it's something appearing here. I just show in folder. I'm not sure that you can see this folder. Can you see this window that is appeared here? Yes, yes, we can. 
Okay, and uh, you see that it returns it as SparkQL RDF file. What you need, uh, you just... Bagan, we are, uh, we are seeing the DBpedia uh, engine, I guess. The code. Okay, then uh, it's uh, different. But anyway, the file that you will receive, you don't need to see it from the window. It's just, it's RDF extension after dot. You just make it OVL and save. And then you will um, save with some name. Uh, I did it, I will show you. I save it with the name uh, country city import new OVL as an anthology. So you, when you will do it, just uh, don't forget to give some name and uh, don't forget to change RDF to avail. Or probably I will try to share the screen. Let me try to do it. Mm -hmm. No, it does not allow me to share this. And oh, maybe this one. Okay, can you see now this? Uh, yes, we can see download. Yeah, so that's what uh, is now in downloads. So I just changed the name of it to Country City. Make it over Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. And then I uh, take this file. I will. You cannot see it, but I will just put it now uh, somewhere to my desktop so that uh, we can open it from Protege and see import separately. So let's. Uh, I will switch. Do it and switch the screen to that. One moment. So I just opened this file which we made as country city import as a separate anthology in Protege, it's possible. So when you open it, let's see what we have here. We have classes, we have city and country. Let's click city. You see so many cities appeared, huge amount. Click country. All of these are countries from DBP. Also quite many. Let's check particular country or particular city. Let's take that. Austria, for example. Individuals by class. Austria here. It's, there are only two uh, cities registered in Austria. Azerbaijan, more cities, whatever. Bangladesh, several cities, and so on. So it works to this direction. Let's check uh, other way around. I don't know, China, and some particular city. What else? We can start from city and just by checking uh, any city from here, you can immediately see from which country this city is. So every city has one country as a result. So you see, you create immediately, actually quite fast, excellent database. You can do anything you want with it as a separate. You can put here some additional information and extend this ontology. Or what I am going to show you, how to import this ontology to the one which is empty, prepared, because just to show how 
this works because now it's like a kind of database and I open this ontology, the basic uh, one that we had. One moment, I share the screen again, try to do it. So this is our empty ontology. It's prepared to take data, especially the data which has the same uh, key names of classes, properties, so it's easy. It's just very natural, must be very natural way of uh, importing. So you go to this window. You see I already created for you just a reminder what kind of you see here, uh, I put it as annotation of my ontology, this uh, query that we did. So you create this kind of annotation so that you can just uh, take it anytime to clipboard just from the ontology and try uh, do the same yourself. So now uh, you see here uh, the lower part, imported ontology. It's not, nothing imported so far, but we will import. You just open the screen and you see import ontology contained in a local file. Can you see it? Yes. Continue. Then in my case, you can just browse or I can see here, yes, country, city, new. Continue and finish. So it takes some time and now this ontology that which we created by uh, from dbpedia, it's now become part of this ontology, empty one. We can just check. Yeah, you see cities, countries, object properties as they were defined in the very beginning with a more uh, like information about being inverse or not inverse, and so on. And if our uh, in the very beginning our active ontology connect uh, has more classes, then just this new two will appear here as additional information to everything what you have before. So in theory, as I told you, I, I don't want to mess our simple tutorial ontology, but of course we can uh, import this to tutorial as such. And this will appear also there. For example, now okay. I can import this. I have yes. a question. Yeah. yeah. So uh, will that be possible to import ontologies under uh, subclasses? So for example, uh, city and country could be imported in under a specific class. Uh, will that be possible? Yes, and everything is possible. Everything which you define in this construct part, the way you are going to construct it, it can be a subclass or sub subclass. Everything is doable. And uh, okay, so also, how, how because that can of, be done? Yeah, it's uh, the same way. When, uh, for example, I did this uh, royalty ontology, I may have as a, in the very beginning just person as a class. But uh, if I want to have royal person as a subclass of it, I just uh, specify it like this, construct me class person, construct me class uh, royal person, uh, construct me relation like uh, royal person subclass of person. So all this immediately appears as a part of this hierarchy. It appear here, person, royal person, and the rest, all these instances, if you construct it so that they must appear in this subclass, they will appear in the subclass. Actually, they appear in also in subclass of this basic class thing. But you can create, a, for example, country on uh, Europe. So if I want to create European country subclass, I can do it. I just create here subclass European country and in uh, that query, I can fill European country. 
But if for doing this, of course, uh, DBpedia must include relation or any sign that the country is European, because otherwise you cannot do it. But I believe DBpedia must have it. So you can create separate subclasses of different countries. And but, but let's try uh, what uh, we may uh, do now. I will try to, uh, how to say, import this anthology, this big one, to our tutorial project, but I will not save. I just show how it, uh, what can effect can be out of it, if it will work. And uh, we can play with it, but not saving it so that I will not destroy everything. But here you can see these anthologies and uh, in PowerPoint, everything which I done, it's already there. So you can just repeat it and you will see the links to these anthologies and uh, you can find them explicitly in uh, Moodle. But right now I switch screen to our tutorial one. Just a moment. So you see, this is our tutorial thing. I put it to come to active ontology. And by the way, let's check uh, what is good that we have uh, same, at least names of classes, city, country also, like we have in our import. But what is different? The different would be uh, this uh, prefixes frame. So it will appear here as two separate classes because uh, same name means nothing, because important is this URI, and URI is defined in different ontology in this case. So let's see th what this would mean. I just make direct import, import local file, continue, and the whole country city, I will take this import country city new import where it is here. Continue and finish. So let's check our class hierarchy. You see, we have now two cities classes the class city which is imported and class city which is our city with particular instances which we make. Also the same about uh, country, I believe, country which is that imported. And uh, in a bold, it's country that we defined. But what we can make here, what is good? We just take this city from here and say that it's equivalent to This one. The same you do with country. You take country and make it equivalent to this one. So now these things are connected. So now you can work like virtually with one entity. So therefore you can uh, even import things which are named differently. You just create this kind of common, uh, uh, this equivalent to connection. So it means that you can just uh, glue a different imported ontology. If you find out that there are special things and properties over there, let's check about objects properties, how they are. This has city, has country. And you can also make it equivalent to other has city. And then uh, somewhere has can't, oh, is city of, we have is city of, make it equivalent to uh, 
this is CTR. So that how it works, and let's check. Uh, sometimes reasoner doesn't work, doesn't like to work with that kind of combined ontologies. We will check. Oh, it actually works well. So now everything is okay, and uh, I just don't want to save it because we have a lot of waste of that. Uh, unnecessary cities and country, but at least you know how it can be done. And uh, I built uh, several ontologies. I just now mm, switch to PowerPoint showing this. So using SparkQuery, you can really build a lot of interesting stuff. Let me check it after the rules. I create like special subchapter called ontology construction, where I uh, put uh, all these experiments separately so that how to construct ontologies. And this is uh, how I did this royalty ontology, and you can find it from here, all these royal families. And uh, uh, this is how I create uh, various uh, object properties in advance, and two classes, men and woman, and step by step, what kind of queries I have made to different uh, subsections or subclasses or classes of uh, DBpedia to capture all hidden persons there and connect them with the right relations. So you see it was necessary 10 stuff. So this is set of rules that you can just uh, use this uh, PowerPoint to, to take to clipboard if you want just some of these rules working. And then it's interesting that uh, I just to want how to query when you have some big result in ontology, you just can query you, uh, for example, in royalty, just to have this target resource, any person you are looking for, and it will uh, gives you that uh, uh, connection of this person to all other persons using all kinds of relations of this person. So if you know name of monarch, you just put it to such kind of simple query, and it will discover this in this uh, royalty ontology. For example, like Peter the Great, it's uh, the name of a uh, famous royal person. And by running this, uh, executing this query, it must return uh, the major family members of it, also inferred ones. Then you can check also uh, ontology that are creative specifically for particular city. Like I just create ontology for my home city without knowing let's almost anything, just using DBP. So I just check out uh, what kind of um, uh, information they refer to city. I just uh, point out what kind of classes of objects refer to city. And it's several queries allow me to build this ontology and you can check it separately. Also, I build make ontology of artificial intelligence. Again, everything what is available in the web about such kind of abstraction as artificial intelligence. And uh, I, uh, uh, it's allow me to find out all companies which are working in artificial intelligence and all kind of uh, information, including people, key expert in artificial intelligence, the articles, major, major inventions, everything. I just a uh, few queries, nothing else. And ontology is collecting me all this information in one uh, place. Of course, it's available in DBpedia, but it's much more uh, convenient to use it because it's collected exactly for this uh, artificial intelligence part. And what is also good that inside this ontology, 
you can add whatever you want, more properties, more classes of instances. So you can extend the DBpedia view to something to your own uh, need or to your own application within your own company, for example. Also, I make the same uh, uh, queries, and you can check this. Uh, for example, you can download uh, predefined uh, queries in DBpedia for RDF data, like about Finland. You can make it about University of Uvascular. You can make it uh, for football. Just use this kind of links to capture information and many other things which is possible to use. DBpedia is excellent place for this kind of games. Because uh, this project, DBpedia, uh, it organized so that if some organization or group of people create big uh, storage of data, which is not secure, like uh, nothing to hide, it's open data, then uh, DBpedia agree with them and connect to this data, like it becoming more and more huge uh, because of that. So it's excellent source of information for different purposes. Okay, so it's uh, almost everything. If you have some questions at this moment, uh, what we have done so that you are not sure that you can repeat. Uh, no questions so far. Okay, great. So, uh, that's it, and uh, the rest is because uh, if you will have, uh, if you are belong to Coin program, and you will have later uh, special uh, service development project. Of course, it's great for you to know that it's uh, possible to create uh, storage in the web, uh, like under the ontology. You know how to do it, and uh, this is kind of uh, basic infrastructure for such, such kind of generic uh, semantic web application so that you can capture information from many sources. DBpedia is just one of them. And you can create your own storage. And you can build your own analytics and SparkQL on top of this storage and make it available for commercial use. So that will be part of uh, one possible scenario for this kind of project that you will have uh, later on in your studies. So it's, well, this works. You can just uh, check from these presentations these basic aspects of it. Uh, there is also interesting uh, big portal that we built uh, with semantic web technology. It's educational portal for the big country like Ukraine. And uh, everything which is stored in this uh, portal, all achievements of Ukrainian universities and everything can be like recorded uh, to this portal and queried you know, through this portal and uh, researchers can be ranked on the basis of the achievement and there's a lot of interesting things. You can also check this portal because it's open stuff. So that's it. I believe that uh, it's uh, the end of our lectures. So I expect from you not to waste time, just uh, while you remember, start uh, making this kind of story. I will appreciate the more information you put in ontology, the better. Like that you check everything and you apply everything you see from this presentation. So you can create classes, you can create different types of properties, you can create restrictions on classes, you can create combination of uh, classes, you can create rules, you can find external ontology and import it. You can query existing databases like DBpedia and fill some classes with data. The more things you show in this, uh, the better. And it's definitely doable. Uh, so far, everyone who did this assignment got some good grade. There were no exceptions for many years. 
So therefore, I wish you good luck with your future studies. And we end our lectures. And the remaining thing, I will uh, update all the records to the Moodle and the files that we created. Also update there so that you can check it from Moodle. OK? OK, okay then, so uh, today yes. is the last lecture, or tomorrow yes. there is? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. It's the last. It will not be tomorrow. It's We have just nine lectures in our plan. OK, great. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, and uh, good luck. And we are stopping record right now. Bye-bye. OK, bye.